All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week, got some rest, all that good stuff over the weekend. We had a pretty crazy week in the stock market last week. Lots of earnings, definitely a couple data sets that were pretty important as well. And this week, we're kind of going into that same mindset. I mean, it's going to be pretty busy. We got earnings, we got the Federal Reserve, we got a bunch of stuff going on this week. If you tuned in last week, we had a pretty good list, our SPY and IWM set up. Played out really well, actually. We we're looking for a bounce in the market. We did get that. Seasonality was also pointing to some upside in the market. So we did follow that, finally. The week before that, we did not follow the seasonality very well. So it was nice to see us back on schedule with the historical moves. Worked out pretty well. Indexes did good. Definitely had a broad market rally. Earnings was even good on the mega caps. So we're probably going to have a pretty busy week this week. Right now, we don't have anything scheduled for Monday, but Tuesday, we do have another PMI reading. The PMIs always have a chance to move the market, as well as consumer confidence at 10. So we have one at 945 and one at 10. This can cause some volatility about 30 minutes after the bell rings. So definitely pay attention to these on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, it's going to be the big one of the day. So just to start out, we do have ISM manufacturing at 10 a.m., also have jolts job openings. So these two being on the same day as the Federal Reserve is just crazy because ISM manufacturing and jolts job openings is already pretty volatile to begin with just by themselves. So the fact that it's on FOMC day, this could bring up the volatility in the market. Lots of times the trading hours before the Federal Reserve, before their press conference, is actually pretty quiet and you'll see a lot of chop, but this might actually bring some range and volatility to day trade before the Federal Reserve. So that should be pretty interesting. And then at 2 p.m. we do have the interest rate decision. So we'll know if they want to hike rates, if they want to cut, or if they want to just keep them where they're at and not do anything. Likely, they're probably just going to pause again. They're probably not going to lower or increase rates as usual. I feel like right now they do have rates at a pretty good area, especially for the bond yields, for the Fed funds rate. I feel like everything's at a pretty good spot to kind of tighten market conditions. And I feel like they're probably just going to keep it where it's at. But you never really know. I mean, usually you won't really see the Fed try to surprise the market too much. So likely they're probably just going to keep them where they're at. And then at 2.30, we do have the press conference. This will definitely move the market pretty aggressively. So at 2 p.m. after the interest rate decision comes out, you will see a big knee-jerk reaction. Really, it could go either way. So sometimes you'll see a big red candle. Sometimes you'll see a big green candle. It really just depends on the pre-written statement and if they changed anything in the pre-written statement. Because lots of times they'll kind of keep the language the same in the pre-written statement that drops at 2 p.m. But at 2.30, we'll definitely get everything broken down. I feel like the reporters are going to ask Jerome Powell what they meant pretty much for each line that stuck out to them in the pre-written statement. So 2.30 is usually where the magic happened. And then on Thursday, we do have non-farm payrolls. We also have the unemployment rate. We got hourly wages. Also have ISM services. So we have the ISM manufacturing on Wednesday. This will definitely move the market. And then we have the ISM services side on Friday. So very data stacked. And then we do have some earnings coming up real quick. We'll go over that calendar real fast. So here's our week coming into the 29th. We do have SoFi on Monday. That should be pretty interesting. It's a nice ticker to trade. We also have AMD for the chip sector. We also have Amazon. We got PayPal, 3M, McDonald's, Starbucks, Eli Lilly. So lots of stuff. Tuesday will definitely be stacked. I really wouldn't trade earnings, but I mean, if you're buying long-term stuff, it's a little bit easier to hold through the report. Then on Wednesday, we do have Pfizer. I actually have some July calls for this. So we had this in our list last week, but it really didn't do too much. I ended up buying near the 26 to 25 area that it dropped down to. So I'm pretty interested in finding a bottom on Pfizer. Hopefully they have a pretty good report. Also have Qualcomm. We got Devon Energy. We got Carvana. This is a pretty volatile name. Definitely a good insight into the used car market. We also have CVS, Fastly. So some pretty big names here. I would say Pfizer and Qualcomm stick out to me the most, as well as DVN for energy. And then on Thursday, we do have Apple, which is right now one of the largest companies in the S&P. This holds a lot of weight in all the indexes. So this one will be extra important. Usually Apple doesn't really move too much. I would say anywhere from three to 5% in either direction. And since it really only moves like three to 5%, usually you won't really see it drag the market you know, aggressively up or down, really. We had Google and Microsoft last week, which both went up pretty well, and that brought up the NASDAQ pretty aggressively. But that's because we had two of the large caps kind of reporting at the same time. I feel like Apple by itself probably really won't have too much of an impact on the indexes, but you never really know. You definitely just want to pay attention to that on Thursday. We got Coinbase. We got DraftKings. We got Cloudflare. 
pretty stacked this week. Nothing really crazy on Friday except for Hershey's here. Fubo TV as well. I honestly haven't traded Fubo in a really long time, but it used to be a pretty good ticker to trade. But yeah, that's really it. Big ones of the week. It's going to be Amazon, of course, on Tuesday. It's going to be AMD as well. I would say Apple, pretty big as well. And also Coinbase if you're into the crypto stocks. So pretty stacked week for earnings. Definitely going to be pretty volatile, especially with the Federal Reserve and all the data we have. It's going to be crazy. It's probably going to be a big clown show. So be prepared. And on to the seasonality for this week. We did follow up pretty good last week. It looks like this week from the 29th to May 3rd, it's actually pretty quiet. I mean, we have summarized profit at 0%. We got winning trades for the long side at 55%, so nothing crazy. And you can see this little period right here, kind of just choppy, little pullback, but then it comes back up historically. Nothing really special, nothing really to go off here, except for start being careful in May, really. You can see that the historical move is usually down throughout May until the end of the month. And then the end of the month, very big up thrust move up into June. And then June sells off again as summer trading gets pretty boring. Lots of volume goes down and just illiquid so you will see that sell in may and go away lots of the times last year we didn't follow it but lots of times historically you will see sell in may and go away and then very quiet trading during the summertime as well especially august and september so yeah pretty boring week for seasonality don't really have anything important here to go off of nothing really that bullish nothing really that bearish either so one thing i would pay attention to is just the month over month move here on in may you could tell that we could see some weakness so you definitely want to keep that in mind i wouldn't really say the market's like too bearish right now like we recovered a pretty good amount last week on the spy and the qqq reclaimed over some of the important moving averages on the one week so Maybe we can go back up, but we are kind of at a stall out point, I would say. Not quite at all time highs and not really quite at the lows either. We're kind of mid range right now, but we'll go over the technicals on SPY and QQQ later. But yeah, that's for seasonality. Pretty boring. Like I said, summarized profit overall, 0%, nothing special. Winning trades at 55%, so basically 50-50 this week over the last 20 years. We could even go down to 10 years real quick, put the slider down, check it out for recent years, very similar. You got winning trades actually at 70% for shorts. So downside, if you went short here the last 10 years for this week specifically, you would have won 70% of the time with a summarized profit at 6%. So the probability for downside a little bit more increased over the last 10 years, but you got to keep in mind, you really don't have a large sample size for years here. It's only 10 years. So but overall, I mean, it's pretty similar to the 20 year. You have a little dip. Only thing that's different on the 20 years, there's, there's a kind of a little bounce that goes up and you kind of just stay flat by the end of the period at May 3rd. So yeah, pretty boring, nothing crazy. Maybe you can see a little pullback here. But overall, I feel like the technical is still a pretty good for some upside in the market. Really just have to get over some levels. All right, and on to our individual setups. We'll go over snow here real quick. It's actually a pretty straightforward setup. It's a nice little breakout play. You have a test one, a test two, test three, kind of a test four rejection right here, but it did break out of that. So it's looking pretty decent here for some type of breakout play. We are now over the 921 combo as well. So you can see that we've been trending under this cloud and rejecting off of this cloud pretty well. So for price targets, really, you can just go off of the next moving averages. You got your 50 right here, and then you have your 200 that are the dots. So definitely watch that 166 area as potential resistance at the 50 EMA. And then you also have resistance at the 173s or so. So you definitely want to watch these for potential rejections. But overall, I mean, it's breaking out of here. If you buy a lot of time, you won't really have to worry too much about the resistance, I guess. You could just hold a bit longer at least up until earnings in May. Give it some room. If it does indeed fall back within the downtrend though, it probably gets something else. So if it invalidates, pops back within here, goes back under the one day 921 EMA combo, you could definitely look at something else. So that's for snow, it looks pretty good. Like I said, you got a short term breakout here. You got to move over the 921 cloud. Also at potential resistance points at the 50 and the 200. So watch those pretty carefully if it gets up there. So snow looking at calls, be a little patient maybe. If you want to kind of deal with these potential resistance points at the 200 and the 50 EMA, buy lots of time, go with July minimum, maybe a couple months out. All right, number two, we're going on to U or Unity Software. You can see that it has pretty strong support at the 2220s. You can see that price definitely kicked off a really nice trend back here. And this was low at the 2220s. And we did hold that up last week as well. You also have a pretty gnarly downtrend here. Test one, test two, 
test three now trying to break out of that so that's pretty interesting obviously you might need a little bit of a better signal for a breakout but i would definitely keep this on watch for upside one thing that's kind of difficult is it is coming up into earnings you can see here i think about 11 days from now so that's going to be on the ninth so if you really do want to hold this through earnings which i really feel like it's pretty risky holding anything through earnings with options. If you do, you definitely want to buy a lot of time. If you're going to hold through the report, you need to be in with July minimum. And I would definitely go at the money or already in the money to avoid IV crush, have your deltas make up for it a little bit. And as well, if it goes down and you're wrong, the fact that you're already in the money slightly or at the money, it can kind of offset the total amount that you would lose a little bit. So you got to be careful on that front. Trading earnings is very risky. But if we can get over this 2489, which is this previous structure low, it's a little short term one right here. If we can get over that, we definitely see a nice little pop out here. Also needs to get out of that downturn line. But you can tell it's getting pretty tight. I mean, this thing's been trending pretty much since December 23, all the way until now. So this is kind of a risky contrarian or bottom pick type play. You got to be careful with that. But like I said, if you buy time, it can deal with drawdown risk. And if you hold through the earnings, I feel like you won't get hurt as bad, at least if you're, you know, two months out for July. But yeah, you looking at calls here, definitely just be patient. You want to see it over that 2489 eventually. Really, if you wanted to wait for it to get over that 2489, maybe you could even call it 25 flat. If you can get over that, you could use that as a signal as well, or you could wait and just use this as a signal as well, this downtrend line. So that's for you looking at calls, be patient. All right, next we're going to IWM, which we had last week on our list, but I want to re-add it again for a call setup because we have a different type of setup here. Last week we were focused on this one day 200 EMA bounce. You had this close last Friday. We got these great two candles here, Monday and Tuesday. So these paid if you took the calls that we were looking at last week in our trade ideas list this is a great setup strictly off the one day 200 ema this week it's a little bit different you're trading the breakout one thing that changed as well you do have a one day macd cross the first since think march so it's been about a month since it's had a positive macd cross it's been negative for this whole period right here that it's been selling off now starting to get that positive cross you really will have to get over this one day 21 ema which is about 199s even if i got rid of the moving averages and just looked at the levels you have a pretty big level at 199.60s you will need to reclaim over this low right here. So that 199.60s is your key to free space. If you can get into the free space, you have a gap above here that can fill and you could head back uh, to the 200 plus. So it's a pretty clear breakout. Right now, the futures really aren't doing too much. So I feel like you probably still will open up generally outside of this downtrend line. So you pretty much stay broken out unless there's a really big development overnight and the futures dump and it opens back within. As long as it opens out here, I feel like there's a chance we could pop and keep running here. We just really need to get over that 199.60 level, which is this kilo right here. And you can see that this originated from this little bottom right here. This is a pretty gnarly bounce for three days. Also tried to hold up here. And then you can see price got very aggressive to the downside once we lost it right here. So that's why that 199.60s is very important. And like I said, your one day nine and 21 EMAs are right here. We did close over the nine but we are not closed over the 21 yet. You also have the one day 50 right here at the same spot at about 200, basically the same spot as 199.60s. So you need to get it over that 50 EMA as well. Once we start closing over that 50 EMA, lots of free space up into the gap, like I said, and maybe we can start heading back into these highs up here in the upper 200s, about 210 or so. So that's for IWM, looking at calls again, just a different setup from last week. Like I said, last week was just this one day 200 EMA bounce. We got that. Now we are setting up for this breakout, so it's something different. All right, and on to the indexes. Our first one here, we're gonna go over SPY real quick. So last week we were looking for the bounce in the SPY. We did get that. One reason I was looking for a bounce in the SPY is because we had this little drop base rally demand. You got drop base rally it was a strong point right here it was also a very strong point right here for last week you can see monday really nice day closed up about one percent tuesday had another one percent day up and our price target was about 503 we did get that almost the first day actually on monday and we even exceeded that ended up doing an update in the discord if you wanted to see higher than 503s you needed to see multiple closes over 503 so you had a close over 503 tuesday 
It had closed over 503 on Wednesday. Also, it had closed over 503 on Thursday. So you can see in the Discord here, I put IWM and SPY at ideal price targets. Going forward, if you want to see higher prices, you need IWM closing over the one day 921 EMAs again, which we still need going into this week. And then SPY, you needed to keep closing over 503. So those closes over 503 was key to kind of get that big push on Friday. Here's the big push as well as the earnings. So the earnings played basically the main role in why we went up. But I feel like the fact that it held that strength over 503 and reclaimed that gap support that helped a lot just for people to stay bullish this week even though we opened down low on thursday we did recover and close back over it on thursday so that's basically why i feel like 503 was my max target last week you really could only go up to here and then if you want to see higher you had to see closes over that 503 also that little structure low at a 504.90 that could help as well but for this week we kind of do have a little bit in the way we got the one day 921 combo right here the 9 and 21 combo. We are briefly over the 21, but we kind of closed right at it. You might need a little bit more evidence, but I still feel like the market can stay bullish over this 504.90s to 503 level. So even if the market did dip and we pulled into these areas right here at the 504s to 503s, I would still be looking for scalps or you know upside off of these levels right here. And same thing, even if we dipped back down into demand at the, what is that, the 494s, I would buy the dip down there as well. It's the same demand that we played last week. And then max upside, I could see if we do want to stay over these important levels at the 504s to 503s. I do have us up to 512.70s at least, which is this really big sell-off candle low. Also a short-term bottom right here from these two candles. So this 512.76 is pretty important. And if we can get up there, it could probably act as resistance. And there's also supply briefly above that, as you can see right here, that meets about 515s or so. It's a pretty much a drop base drop level. And it's a pretty gnarly level too, because after this candle, there was big sell imbalances. So I feel like this area probably will be a little bit tough to get through if we get up there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You want to keep seeing a close over the 50 EMA, obviously, which we got that on Friday. You will want to see another close over the one day 21, which is right here at about 508. And then max upside, I can probably just project up to 512. So you got about, you know, four points or so before you hit that. If it does want to clear that 512.76, you can really only see up to 515s at the supply zone. So that's for SPY looking pretty bullish. Closed over the 503s and stuff last week. Like I said, if it does want to reject the 21 EMA and, you know, open under it and reject all day, just start looking for dip buys at the 503s to 504.90s. And like I said, that 504.90s, you can probably just round up to 505, but that comes from this area right here. So you got a short-term bounce and a wick area right here. And then your 503, just this gap, old gap actually, this old gap structure low. All right, and QQQ is pretty similar to SPY. I mean, I expected a bounce. I also had pretty red calls last week that came up and recovered. I closed those at 20%, so that was nice. I was actually down pretty well on them, but I felt pretty good about it bounced, so I held on to them. Luckily, it bounced, and I took a profit at a pretty good area. I'd say about, where did we take it? I think on Friday. I think it's about this 431s or so, this little area right here on Friday. So that worked out pretty good. I'm glad that finally came into fruition because I kept going green to red, green to red, like four or five different times. There were just some May calls, May 17, and they were 425 calls. So they were kind of already at the money when I bought them. But then we had this big red day on Friday last week. And this definitely knocked down some value, brought me down to, you know, negative 30 or 40%. And they were pretty expensive. They were like 1K a contract. And I only grabbed one. So I made 200 bucks. Not too bad. But I feel like the fact that they were expensive definitely helped a little bit. And the fact that I went already kind of at the money on Thursday, maybe slight in the money, it definitely helped with this drawdown a lot. And the fact that we held this 416s to 412s area definitely kept me pretty confident that we could see a bounce. So last week, that 412.92 just came from this little peak right here. I mentioned this could be a pretty good back test area to bounce. And then your 416s came from this little peak right here, this little drop to rally. This is a pretty important peak low as well. And I mentioned pretty much bearish under 412s or the 412.92 and bullish over 416s. You can see what happened when we got over the 416s, just a very nice rally. So this is a pretty good structure low. And you could definitely tell the first thing Monday, once we got over the 416s, it was just straight amazing. So we opened over it on Monday, kind of gapped down a little bit, definitely got bearish under that, as you could tell from this big sell-off candle, almost a negative half percent dump right here, which is very gnarly. 
But then once we got back over it right here, you could tell the velocity increase. So that 416.79 was a huge level. And then basically it was just smooth sailing from there. And then you could see on uh, Thursday here, we gapped down pretty aggressively down 1.5 kind of pulled into the 418s but we were pretty close to that 41679 and it got bought back up pretty nicely so for this week it's very important to get over 43274 so this is the previous structure low or the gap low this is very important to get back over which also meets with this drop base drop supply so you could tell what we kind of stalled out here on friday just very slow kind of stall out and that's because it's a pretty good supply zone i mean drop base drop very aggressive selling so something happened here to lead to this and that's why we're kind of stalling out we do need to get over that as well as this gap or previous gap structure low so this free space is from about 433s up to 440 so this is free space if we get over the supply get over the 432 start closing over that this is a pretty easy shot up to the next supply at the 440s you could definitely start looking for put scalps i guess at this 432s if you have a nice rejection signal because you also have the supply here so you could look for a rejection here as well i just wouldn't go long inside this area i would wait for it to get over this so if you really did want to start looking at kind of put scalps of this area i understand just make sure you have a good signal first because we did close over this one day nine ema but you do have the 50 and the 21 kind of acting as confluence so you got 432.74 previous structure low you got drop base drop supply from this candle right here you have the 21 EMA and the 50 all in the same spot. So this could definitely act as resistance. So like I said before, just maybe wait for it to get in this free space. That's a pretty easy bullish signal. And you could definitely scalp calls once you start getting in this area because it could fill up the free space pretty fast, kind of like a gap. But yeah, tough area here. Definitely the reason why I took profit on my calls because I really don't know how it's going to react. There's just too much in the way. So once we start closing over that level, definitely a little bit more bullish. But for right now, definitely be cautious. Maybe you could look for put scalps. But like I said, wait for a VIX increase. Make sure you have evidence. Maybe wait for a DXY move. Make sure the DXY is green. Make sure that, you know the bonds are selling off as well. You have yields going up. All that stuff sets up for downside. You don't want to just buy randomly just because. So that's for QQQ. Tough area. Like I said, bulls. Wait for it to close outside this area. Otherwise, Definitely be cautious at this spot. All right, and last but not least, we'll go over the VIX real quick. So last week was pretty straightforward. We wanted to see a signal under 18 to be confident in longs in the market. We got that first thing Monday. I can even go down to the 15 minute. I'll show you how aggressive the VIX got below that 18 level. So here was VIX Monday. You can see it kind of tried to bounce off of that first thing in the morning. But once we got under that, it was basically free fall down into the next 1692 and all the one day levels that we have once we lost... 1692 straight shot down to 16 and the 1540s so on and so forth and the one thing important that we did get all week was a close under the 18s also closes under the levels that you wanted to see so here was monday we had to close under the 18s which was very important tuesday we had to close under the 16 level just this previous peak right here and then friday finally it closed under the 1540s which is this multi-top previous resistance area right here you got a rejection rejection here 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 so you see the vibes i mean it's following the levels pretty well we just really needed that close back under the 18s and like i said that's pretty much a straight shot down to the 1540s and we saw exactly that so that's pretty cool finally seeing something go exactly how i would want to see it and overall i feel like longs are just pretty smooth last week i mean definitely a good week for the bulls out there selling pretty aggressively the week before that so yeah for right now i really can't be too bearish on the market because we have a pretty key close under the 1540 every time volatility got back under here it sold back off to the lows and we are at that same spot again we did have a couple of fake outs here like I would say April the 9th, also April the 11th, two fake out candles here, also one on April the 8th. You did get those closes under 15s and then aggressive pops back up. So it's not 100%, but I do like the probabilities of VIX continuing lower here just because we do have that key close under the 1540s. Maybe even a more aggressive move under 15 flat next week. Definitely pay attention for that and we can see the market go higher. Max downside, I can really see, probably mark this little level for short term that 1459 which it bounced right here and then also 1367 which is this level right here so that's pretty much the max downside i could see for the vix and that's only if the market wants to be bullish obviously with the fed coming up as long as paul sticks to the script and he keeps talking about rate cuts and he keeps feeling positive and confident about inflation going lower we could see the vix just kind of die here and head back down to lows otherwise if we do hear that language we kind of had last time where he was talking about not being as confident in inflation going lower 
that is an issue. And you will see rate cut odds definitely change very aggressively. So hopefully it won't be too crazy. I really would like a smooth week in the market, kind of like last week. See everything going how it should. Maybe see a broad market rally. You got small caps, large caps, everything going up in tandem. That is my ideal scenario that I would like to see. And the VIX looks good. I mean, volatility is back to a normal level. We are very, very high up here. Definitely the highest we have been in months. And you can start seeing the ATRs widen in the market. The ranges were getting wider and it was getting a little bit more aggressive, I guess, to the downside. Now we're kind of back to normal a little bit in terms of volatility. We do have a lot of data coming up this week, though. And with the Fed, it's likely you're going to see a crazy move. But let's hope those crazy moves are to the upside. Looking pretty good. I mean, the market's kind of stuck at a point, I guess. Like you got QQQ at a pretty big resistance. You got multiple points of resistance. You got SPY kind of stall out at 21 EMA. IWM needs to get over its 21 EMA. So you got a couple of things that needs to happen first before you will see these setups play out. But overall, could be a pretty good week. Let's hope Jerome Powell comes in dovish. Let's continue the bull train going. So that's all I got for you guys this week. I love you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. And I love you and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today. Completely free of charge.